So, hello everyone, and welcome to my talk titled How Writing Just Import the Wrong Way uh, Slows Down Your Website. So, let me first introduce myself. My name is Francois. I work at a company called Caracoon. I'm a senior full stack software engineer, and I'm also part of the Swiss Testing Board, where I'm an active member. And um, you can see all of the details now to contact me on this slide. And also, by the way, you can see in the top right, there's a QR code. If you're interested in the slides, you can scan it anytime. It will be on any slide, so don't worry if you don't catch it now. Um, yeah, feel free to download slides. So I remember when I was young, my mother told me that money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> well, thankfully, ChatGPT allows us to generate images just like this one nowadays. <laughs> Um, and this kind of made me question what I learned, in a way. Um, maybe money does grow on trees after all. Uh, maybe you just need to shake them. Uh, well, obviously, my talk is not about shaking actual trees, um, but it is about tree shaking, if you're familiar with that. But um, to get everyone on the right uh, or the same level, first let me introduce you to some basics to understand tree shaking later. So first, um, when you have a web application, for example, a React application, as you can see here, um, if you look at the package.json file, it will look something just like this. You can see we have some dependencies, some dev dependencies, and then Webpack is here the bundler that we have, um, and the bundler essentially takes all of those dependencies, and then it transforms those dependencies into two files. It is, on the one hand, an index.html, which loads those dependencies. And the dependencies are bundled up together, hence the name bundler, into a bundle file called bundle.js, for example. But um, you know, it could be also different names, and there are more intricacies. Um, and essentially, as I mentioned, the HTML is kind of simple. It doesn't contain much. It just contains the bare essentials that you need for an HTML page. And then it also just references your bundle.js file. And this essentially then loads um, all of your dependencies, but also your source code. So when you have an application with some source code in it, in the React application, it will also be included in this bundle. This is just a simplified explanation. Um, the people of you that know Webpack know you, it can get a lot more complex than that. But um, I won't go into more details. It's not necessary here. So let's look at um, the bundle size. So for this slide, if you know about reshaking already, ignore that for a moment for this explanation. So let's look at, let's say we have two dependencies. Then let's say the index.html file takes one second to load. If we look at the bundle.js file, it may also take one second to load, and it loads after the index.html file, since that first needs to be opened by the browser. And then if we, let, let's say, a lot of different dependencies. Um, then if we load the bundle.js file, it will take quite a bit longer because you have much more dependencies that are included, which makes it much bigger. And um, in terms of, you know, depending on your internet, how fast it is, it will take longer or shorter. And so to explain to you now how tree shaking works, if you look at the code that we have here, you can see we have um, a simple function called shakeit, which has some methods that it uses from Lodash, which is kind of a popular utility library that is being used. And now what you can imagine with tree shaking is, imagine having a tree. And then you can see we have all of those methods that are in Lodash uh, that are kind of uh, branches and leaves on the tree. And you can see is string, is array, and join. The ones that we use are kind of here marked as leaves because they're kind of attached to the tree strongly. And the other methods that we don't use, they're kind of hanging loosely in the tree itself. And then now if we shake the tree, um, the, meth the methods that hang in there just loosely, they fall down to the ground. And then it gets tree shaken. This way, we only have the methods is string, is array, and join. And those are the only methods that are being applied to the bundle.js file. And as you can imagine, this saves a lot of space and makes your website a lot faster. So this is kind of a form of so-called dead code elimination. At least that's what it's called usually. And it relies on the static structure of the ES2015 module syntax for imports and exports. 
And the name and concept was popularized by the bundler called Rollup. It's not as used anymore as um, you know, it used to be, um, but um, it is supported by Rollup since quite a long time and also by Webpack um, since quite a long time. So if we look at, for example, is it a good idea to add the dependency Lodash, you can see on the left side it is quite big. So now that we know that what tree shaking is, you know, is it a good idea to add it? In theory, probably yes. <laughs> and uh, also, by the way, the screenshot is from Bundlephobia. Um, if you're interested, you can also check it out. It's a website that's quite useful to know how big um, a uh, dependency is. And um, if we look at, for example, Vue, you can see it's, um, you know, Lodash is about half the size of Vue, so Lodash is really quite big, so we really need to take this into consideration. But of course, as you've seen earlier, if you do it correctly, then yes, it should be tree shaken, so it should be fine. So exact, I was exactly in this situation a few years ago at the custom project, um, where I wanted to use a method in Lodash, um, but we didn't have Lodash yet as a dependency. Um, I knew about tree shaking already, so I kind of confidently added this method to the front end, knowing it will be fine. And um, if you look at one, uh, what you can find on the internet, uh, um, at least most of the advice you can find on how you can make use of tree shaking is you should use ES2015 style imports and exports. Um, and this, by the way, was the knowledge that I had uh, back then when I uh, first introduced Lodash um, in, in this custom project that I mentioned earlier. And um, so how this looks like is like this. You can see, for example, here, um, those, those are the exports that we cannot use to be able to be tree shaken. Those are common JS imports. And this one is also an import, um, which is 2015. But if the foo file contains more de methods than just foo, they will be imported as well. So make sure you don't use them. And um, you know, according to the information you find online, most if you just use it like this with the ES2015 style imports and exports, you should be fine. Um, and um, actually, if you only take home one thing, then uh, please just never import things in this way, as you can see here, because if you do it like this, this will really include everything from Lodash into your bundle. Um, no bundler can help you here. So let's see, what does um, the bundle, um, what is the impact on the bundle size if we, for example, include a function like a string? In the customer project, I wanted to use this method. And uh, so what we learned already so far, if we import it this way, we would expect that it would be tree shaken, right? Um, well, you know, I knew my colleagues at the customer project, they were quite conscious about adding new dependencies. So I just wanted to make sure that a string doesn't add too much to the bundle because I was not sure how much of an impact that would have. Um, so I made a build before adding Lodash and one build after adding Lodash to um, see how much impact it had. And then, oops, <laughs> I noticed why is the bundle size bigger by 24 kilobytes? <laughs> I didn't expect that at all. <laughs> um, I mean, if you look at the bundle size, you can see it's practically the entire bundle size of Lodash. Uh, I was so surprised because I thought I knew uh, how it would work. <laughs> and if some of you knew, know the Dunning-Kruger effect, this kind of is um, explaining where, you know, sometimes when you learn something new, then you learn a little bit, and then suddenly you feel like, ah, oh, you know, I know a lot about this topic. And then as soon as you learn, get more and more into it, you notice how much you don't know, and um, you kind of then notice how much you really know about this. And this curve kind of symbolizes how, you, uh, how much you feel like you have. And actually, this point, um, I was here, <laughs> and it is called Mount Stupid, actually. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, and uh, that, this was the point that I was at where I thought, oh, you know, I knew how tree shaking worked and I was quite, quite confident, but thankfully I questioned myself and uh, this way I learned something new. So let me tell you what the internet doesn't tell you about tree shaking, actually. <laughs> so if we look at the implementation of a string from Lodash, you can see here um, that it uh, uses uh, CommonJS style imports and exports, um, which I mentioned that they cannot be tree shaken. 
Um, but that's actually not all. Um, what's worse is that um, when you use ES2015 imports together with CommonJS exports, it results in the whole module getting imported instead. <laughs> This was quite surprising to me. I mean, there are no warnings by the E, no warnings by the linter, no warnings by the bundler. <laughs> and this was really a what <laughs> moment for me in this moment. And uh, so how can we actually make use of tree shaking here? So there are a few ways. Um, copying the implementation of eString from Lodash into your code base is not one of them. <laughs> Believe me, I experienced this, and by the laughters in the audience, I see that some of you also did that. <laughs> and um, Lodash is actually structured in a way that there is one JS file per method, and then you can use a so-called cherry-picking syntax. You can see by writing, for example, import eString from Lodash slash eString, by this, we import the specific eString JavaScript file, and then you can see this only has an impact of 0.21 kilobytes uh, on the bundle size, which is much nicer, of course, than 24 kilobytes. And uh, there's also another alternative. This is something particular to Lodash. It has another package, which is called Lodash-ES. And if you use that, you can use the regular ES2015 style imports because it kind of provides you an uh, abstraction that uses ES2015 style exports. So you're actually fine if you use it, and you will be able to have tree shaking. But you may be thinking now, there must be an easier way. Do I really need to go to every dependency that I'm using and check what kind of imports and exports they have? if there's an alternative package, and find out what impact this has on my bundle size. This seems kind of annoying. And I would agree with you. That's actually the question that I had to myself as well. And there is actually, um, at least kind of, there is an import cost plugin, for example, for IntelliJ and for VS Code, which estimates the bundle size impact for imports. And you can see here, it shows exactly Depending on the style of import that you use, uh, what the impact on the bundle size is, you can see with the cherry picking syntax, we have 2.15 kilobytes. With the ES2015 syntax, we have 25 kilobytes. And if we change it to the uh, 2015 style import, you can see it also says that it's a uh, 25 kilobytes. So this actually makes it um, kind of easy. Um, the only part that this plugin doesn't help you with is if you Notice, for example, that um, the bundle size impact is much bigger than you expect. It doesn't tell you, of course, how to change that, but now that you've visited this talk, you know. So, And um, also, another option is um, you can use Bundlephobia, and this will tell you which packages are tree shakeable. You can see it by this tree shakeable um, annotation here. And by the way, you can see these IntelliJ and VS code is underlined. So um, if you grab the slides, remember to scan the QR code. Um, you can click on the IntelliJ and VS code um, underlined things, and then you can actually download those, in, um, you know, those uh, plugins if you want to use them. Yes. Yeah, so in this case, you can look at um, here Lodash versus uh, Lodash ES, and you see that Lodash ES has the annotation tree shakeable, while Lodash doesn't. So this tells you that you are able to use it as well. But of course, that's more work than just using a plugin if you can. So now it's time to make a pull request at my at the custom project. So with the knowledge that I gained, I created a pull request, and this was the comment that I got. <laughs> Sure, you want to introduce Lodash just because of eString? That's a big fish. <laughs> Turns out I knew my colleagues at the Cosmo project quite well, and it was the right idea to experiment with those things, because then I was able to tell them um, what I learned and that it won't have an impact that is big enough. And uh, just to sum up, it's a bit difficult to predict by eye how and if the bundlers will tree shake something. And using the import cost plugin and Bundlephobia can help you make this decision quicker. And as with performance optimization in general, the only way f you can know for sure is by measuring. Of course, it comes down to this. And also, don't be afraid to use dependencies, but make sure that when you use dependencies that they can be tree shaken. And if uh, it is not possible, then consider maybe submitting a pull request to the dependency if it's open source to make it possible to make it tree shakeable. So maybe money does grow on trees after all. If we implement tree shaking in our applications, the websites will load faster, 
which will make our users happy, and this makes our customers happy, which means maybe we earn more money in a way. <laughs> so I'm at the end of my presentation. This is where you can grab the slides. I don't have time for questions uh, since it's only 15 minutes, but you can uh, catch me afterwards. I will be staying here for a while. Thanks a lot for your attention.